Hello everyone, welcome to the Blue Collar Beer Gentlemen. I'm Topher, and I started this channel because I'm a fan of craft beer, but I'm also on a limited budget. But that's not what today's video is about. Today's video is about Boulevard Beer. I was born and raised in Kansas City, Missouri. Boulevard Beer was my introduction to craft beer. In 1989, when they were founded, I was 17 years old and not legally able to start drinking their beer. That didn't keep me from drinking it, however, and in fact, the first time I ever understood the distinction between a good quality beer and all the crap that was out there was when my friend Don said to me, I want you to try this, and he handed me a Boulevard Unfiltered Wheat, and then he handed me a Bud Light. He said, and I want you to tell me the difference. And I didn't have enough adjectives to describe the difference between the two. And it was after that that I realized that beer could actually be enjoyed, not simply consumed for its ability to get you drunk. And that's when I started my, my introduction to craft beer, my love for craft beer. It all came from Boulevard Beers. Into the 90s when I was in my 20s and living in Kansas City, I used to go to First Friday. For those of you who know Kansas City and know the art scene there, you know that First Friday was oftentimes a place where you could find Boulevard kegs at galleries. It was a place where there was oftentimes Boulevard bottles and cans. I had a couple of friends who worked for Boulevard, and I'm not going to mention their names, although I will say it does appear as though what happened at Boulevard happened after my friends had left there. So, now, what was it that happened at Boulevard? Well, I didn't do this video for a while because I wanted to get my facts straight and I wanted to list this, I wanted to do a timeline, I wanted to do everything. And I decided that's not what this is about. It's not about me doing a timeline. I'm not, I'm not an attorney. I'm not here to present a case. These are the things we know, okay? We know these things. Boulevard had someone who was on their staff, a male employee, who was making things extremely difficult and, in fact, almost unsafe. And perhaps, I, maybe I shouldn't even say almost, was making things unsafe for women who worked at that brewery. And this went on for a long time. And this got swept under the rug for a long time. And there was more than one woman who complained about this guy. More than one. And somehow, everybody else was blamed for this except him. Everybody else's schedules were rearranged so they didn't have to work with him. Accommodations were made for this person. Now, I don't know whether this person had the negatives on somebody or whether he was somebody's nephew, that I don't know. I don't know why he was kept around. I, I honestly couldn't tell you. I can't imagine anybody being so damn good at their job that they're worth that. So that made me disillusioned of Boulevard. And it really made me wonder whether I still wanted to continue to drink Boulevard because Boulevard got bought out by Duvel Mortgit many years ago which means by the standards of this channel, it's corporate swill. And I overlooked that because it was my hometown brewery and called it hashtag my hometown brewery. I loved Boulevard. And when Boulevard came to Las Vegas, I was thrilled. But there's no excuse for that. There's no excuse for allowing someone to make a work environment unsafe and hostile for other people. And then, when I went to Twitter and I saw the statement issued by John McDonald, one of the founders of Boulevard Brewing, I didn't even have to go that far into the video before I was already disgusted. Because the man said, we had to make some hard personnel changes. We had to make some hard choices on personnel changes. Why was it hard? Why was it hard? You know, you can still be somebody's friend, still back them as a friend, and say you can't in support them in this business environment. Now, it's very simple. You fire the person, and if you believe that the person still has value, you keep them as a friend. But you don't. What you don't do is you don't allow this person to continue to come into your place of business and terrorize other people. I'm disgusted. 
I'm disgusted by how much money I spent on Boulevard beers. I'm disgusted by the fact that I was thrilled when they came to Las Vegas when I was living there and I was finally able to get their beers. I'm just all around disgusted. I'm disgusted at how many, how many Super Bowls I went and bought Boulevard beers just so I could make sure that I could have Kansas City beers with me. I'll never again drink a, a Boulevard beer. Those who know me and know me well know that I don't use the word never. But I just won't. I say never because I will never knowingly drink a Boulevard beer. I will never knowingly hand Boulevard beer any more of my money. And I will never understand why it was difficult for you to make personnel changes, John McDonald, when you knew, when it was proven to you, that this person was terrorizing your employees, creating a hostile and dangerous and unsafe environment. Women had to go to the police because Boulevard Brewery wasn't taking this shit seriously enough. I'm disgusted. I'm recording this on the second day of May. Nancy's going to edit it and we're going to post it on the third day of May 2021. After this video has been posted, I'm going to go back to my channel and I'm going to delete every single Boulevard review, every beer I ever did. I don't want any association with them. They are no longer my hometown brewery. I don't see how they could ever repair the damage from this. I really don't. And I don't think, even if they somehow could, I will never again give them a second chance. I don't see how they could possibly ever get my business back. And screw you, John McDonald. Screw you for it being a hard decision to make to get rid of someone who was terrorizing your employees. Screw you for making it, for, for it, it being a difficult decision to make that someone who is making your employees feel unsafe in your brewery was a difficult decision. You can write square to hell. Okay? You're exactly what's wrong with this world. You're exactly why women live in fear. I think it's Gandhi who's credited with the, the quote, evil happens when good men stand idly by and do nothing. Well, you stand idly by and do nothing. When you have the power to actually do something, you're no longer a good man. You're just as complicit in this as, as the guy who was terrorizing those women. And you're a scumbag as far as I'm concerned. And I hope you try and come after me legally. Because I'd love for you to prove otherwise that you're not a scumbag. So, the hell with, with Boulevard Brewery. The hell with my hometown brewery. I don't have a hometown brewery anymore. Just simply don't have one. And the hell with John McDonald. Well guys, if you like this video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to check out my other channel, Fat 50 and Running a Marathon. And until next time, drink good beer, don't terrorize your co-workers, don't sexually harass women, don't make women unsafe and unafraid to go to their workplace. Cheers!